area. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, depending on where you're at. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And today I have with me Nikki Bale. I'll just read a little bit of her bio, which is fairly impressive, I must say. Nikki is an organizational development consultant and coach who has worked with individuals, teams, and organizations of all sizes, public and private, for-profit, nonprofit, you name it, she's worked with them. Her superpower, and I love this, her superpower lies in her combined use of proven methods and tools with her expert skills as a facilitator. I love a good superpower, and that does sound like one. So Nikki, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. What brought you into coaching? What got you into the coaching business? Yeah, so actually one of my closest friends uh, I've been friends with since college has been in the coaching consulting world um, for as far back as when we all started to hear about coaching and we all pictured crystals and a lot of woo-ha. So he was one of the original coaches. And, you know, he, every once in a while, would just drop a little nugget for me to say, I think you should look into coaching. And at the beginning, I just didn't have the right paradigm for what it even was. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. And I was pretty happy in the lane I was in. I was working in real estate, kind of every aspect of it. And, and I, it, yeah, just didn't, it didn't catch my fancy. And then fast forward about 15 ish years, maybe 12, 13 years. And I was having a conversation with my sister-in-law. We were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was encouraging her to look into coaching. And my husband just turned to me and said, now, why are you not doing that again? And at that moment, I just thought, I don't know why I'm not doing it. I don't, I don't have any reasons anymore. It does seem like the right lane. And so that started a pivot away from the career I had been in for 15 ish years and towards coaching and consulting. Scary, but ex and, well, I should say, and exciting to make a pivot yeah. like that because when you you basically realize, oh, the thing that I've been talking myself out of doing for yeah. so long, I could just stop talking myself out of it and do it. And That's right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> this is a big question, so I'll let you take it wherever you'd like to go. What would you say that you're doing in your coaching practice these days that is unique? Yeah, I love that question. I think that's a great question. So right now I am, I'm developing a coaching program for the organization that I'm a partner with. And a big part of it is having an action learning element baked into the program. So, you know, purist coaching wouldn't even like the word program, but as you know, over the years has coaching has morphed and changed and grown. It's got a lot of different applications. And so this particular one is really can be used for individual leaders, but also for teams. And the idea is that within the coaching relationship, maybe in a period of 12 weeks or 16 weeks or whatever it is, that the opportunity will be there to move towards goals using action learning. And so, you know, if I'm meeting with a client and I know they have a big goal, instead of just keeping it at sort of the cerebral level of what are you going to do about it? Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. I can give them some real tools to move past that and say, so this week, what are the specific actions you're going to take and really give them a framework to create the momentum that they need and then be checking in the next week. And then with teams, there's a whole other layer of helping them sort of co-create the experience they want to have in moving certain things forward. So I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a really good tool for teams uh, in particular and leaders to help them understand how to kind of create this really short-lived action life cycle. It doesn't have to be long, you know, you, within a span of a week, you can apply things. So I'm excited about it. That's, that, that's hitting so many sweet spots and, and yeah. leaping over so many of the hurdles that are objections that will normally come up. It's like, I don't know if I have the time for this. How long is this going to take? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I know that I wanted, I want to do the things that I need to do, but I don't know exactly what to do because I kind of yeah. have a script, but also I need the freedom to be able to like go off that script as I need to. And this seems to address all of those common objections. I agree. I think there's a lot of flexibility. So I think, you know, my approach is to say that the coachee is the expert on their life, no matter what setting you're in. And so they know the direction they need to go, but really having bumpers and having some lanes and just having a, a thought partner to help can really create kind of that magic where it's not so wide open. Hey, what do you want to talk about today? That's fine. And there's a place for that. But sometimes people just need some help to say, what do you want to talk about? And here are some ideas to get us rolling. And I think this really will help with that a lot. I love how you basically recruit, recruit the coachee 
into the yeah. into, into basically overcoming all of their own their own obstacles. It's I mean yeah, it's, it's okay. it is the relationship, but I just love that slight shift in positioning, and I like yep. that that mental analogy I have of just like the bumpers. And really, what the first word I thought of was guide rails, yep. and that that keyword that word that comes up constantly in all of my conversations with coaches guides. A lot of people yep. think of coaching as you have someone who is just telling you what to do, and sure that is absolutely a part of it, but that's mm-hmm. not the whole story. It's much more about guidance. You're alongside. You're out in front of encouraging, you're behind encouraging, maybe give them a little push now and then. It's it's both and, it's all of the yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You said it well. Yeah, what I always picture is when you go bowling with your kids and they stick up the little, <laughs> and eventually you grow out of it. Yeah, exactly. When you do grow out of it, I think it's the perfect analogy to say there's going to be times in your life when you need those guide rails or you need the bumpers, and then there's going to be times when you don't need that anymore training wheels too. That's another, another great analogy. It's like, they're, they're so useful at the beginning, but just like anything else, I also, I like to think of a scaffolding as a good metaphor as well. Scaffolding, a necessary component of building something, but when it's, when you're done with it, then, okay, take scaffolding off and you have the beautiful building and then you continue. (laughs) Exactly. Love that. Let's see. Let's look forward. Obviously things have been, it's, it's been a surprisingly, I don't want to say surprisingly, I was surprised a little bit at how good of a time it's been to be in the coaching business because I feel like Mm -hmm. the the need for it has been it was already present but it's been even more revealed Mm -hmm. and I feel like people are more and more adapting and adopting the principles of coaching whether it be in their personal life not just in their fit like fitness personal life health but in their business in their career I think it's valued so much more highly than it was even two years ago so what's, what's going on for you and your coaching business in the, in the next year? Do you have anything like interesting or exciting on the horizon? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, what I just <laughs> described, I'm excited about. And then I'm also in the mix of creating something specifically for startups. So I, yeah, I'm calling it the strong startup. I just think there is a huge element where a lot of my work ends up being getting into the messy middle and then looking back sometimes at okay, how do we get here? And then, okay, let's look ahead. And there's something really exciting about starting at the beginning with an organization and saying, hey, let's start right. Let's do it the right way at the beginning. So that's in the mix for me. It's going to look like somewhat programmatic. It's more of a hybrid of consulting and coaching together. It's not just strictly coaching, but again, creating the scaffolding, as you said, what needs to happen in terms of team development. I mean, I'm sure, you know, with startups, an enormous element. Yeah, they have to have the funding. They have to have a great idea. You know, they have to have X, Y, and Z, but really having, they have to have good timing, but having a good team is a massive element. And so to the extent to which organizations and startups are forward thinking about team health, and creating a healthy team from the beginning. Uh, that's just one of those elements that can be within their control. Of course, you can't you can't always control the timing. You can't always control the funding. But the team element, you, you really have a great level of control over, and especially if you take an intentional approach. So I am working on that right now. I'm really excited about it. I think it's really gonna scratch an, a huge itch in the industry. And, and that, I like that energy, that startup energy of something new is exciting. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Fantastic. It's funny. It's, it overlaps. I mean, it, it, I say it's funny. It happens every day. It overlaps well with a conversation I was having earlier today about in the context of scaling, which is obviously, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's right next to startup as one of those yep. powerful S words. Yep. And yep. one of the things that is not only the key to scaling, but that comes with you at every step of the way is that culture you create, the team yep. and the yep. team principles that you lay yep. out at the beginning that then propagates out and moves with you and scales with you without any further effort. If you lay that foundation right at the beginning, it Mm -hmm. comes with you and supports you at every step of the way. That's right. And the reverse is also true. The dysfunctions you create at the beginning (laughs) and the things that you're unwilling to address, even though they're staring in your face, those (laughs) things scale over time as well. (laughs) This is like, this is reminding me of conversations I've had with my family. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I think coaches are also secretly in the middle of a lot of mediation conversations. You know, you get, you enter into a lot of things where you go, wait, am I coaching now or am I mediating some old conflict here? <laughs> Another both and situation. <laughs> yeah, yep. I could talk to you all day about all this stuff. Real quick, where can people find you online? Is it global leader? Globalleader.com or terraformacoaching.com. So you can find me either place. 
Global Leader is where I'm a partner, part of a, a larger, eco, larger ecosystem, and then Terraform is just where I've been forever. So either of those. And Global Leader is awesome because you can also see some of my partners and they work in different areas than I do. It's very much 360 leadership development oriented. I like that overlap. Again, that's another key to scaling is you have your team where each of you have your own expertise and there you have people who are even more capable than you in so many other ways, but then you overlap in just the perfect way. In my head, I always have like the, I mean, to uh, Venn diagram, the Olympic symbol, you know, the interlocking rings. It's a powerful imagery for for this business. And that's the the key to growing. (laughs) Absolutely. I agree. Well, Nikki, thank you so much for being with us. I, I always find myself, whenever I say thank you for being with us, my head starts to turn like I'm looking at the audience. I just, every, time I, every time I do it, and of course I see myself in the Zoom window and I'm like, Kevin, <laughs> but thank you for being with us today. And thank all of you out there who I keep looking for, for listening. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers. <laughs>